Saving money is important, so what could go wrong? If you don't know us, I'm Larry. I'm Hope. And we're from Under the Median, where every week we bring you videos on practical frugality. Now, this channel is all about spending less and saving more. Yes. But there are some difficulties and some pitfalls associated with saving money. Mm -hmm. We'll give you a list of those in this video, and we'll also share how we have been guilty of some of these pitfalls. <laughs> Never focus on a single financial goal. And that's real easy to do when you have something major. We did this when we were saving up for a house. We focused on that goal and that goal only. The problem with focusing on a single goal is the fact that there are other things in your life that need to be fully funded while you're saving for that goal. So what happened to us was, yes, we saved for the house. Yes, we saved up the cash. Yes, we paid for the house with cash. But we found out after we moved, there were other things that we really should not have <laughs> yeah. put a hard pause on. Now, the way to avoid this is to sort of look at your overall financial picture yes. and make a list. And you mm -hmm. know, if you've watched this for any length of time, what should that list be? It should be prioritized. The <laughs> yeah. most important things do go at the top of that list, but you're never working on just one goal. There are always a series of other goals you're working on at the same time. Now, although we did make this mistake when we were saving for a house, out of that experience came our goal ladder. It's the system that we teach on this channel for reaching goals. It involves showing you how to create yearly goals. And on top of the yearly goals, the next stair step would be your quarterly goals. Depending on how you're doing on those quarterly goals, you set up your monthly goals and then your weekly goals, which we like to call our big three, mainly because we like to gamify pretty much everything <laughs> in our life. And when you call it setting your big three, it just sounds more cool than setting your weekly financial goals. So try that. Like really, like the language you use to describe something can make it all that much more fun rather than making it a drag. Never let panic drive your decisions. Now, one thing Hope and I have found, and I think this is true for all of you as well, if we respond to things by fear and panic alone, we're not necessarily going to be making the correct decisions. Now, there are some things that we need to be afraid about that keeps us from doing dangerous things. Like, I'm afraid to walk out on the road without looking both directions. That <laughs> keeps me from being run over. There's a healthy fear and there's an unhealthy Fear. Yes. When you lay awake at night ruminating over what could happen, <laughs> that's probably in Not the healthy. area of an unhealthy fear. Right. However, if you look changing circumstances straight in the eye mm -hmm. and decide how your ability to save money and your plan for saving money and handling your finances, how that's going to shift because of what's happening around you, that is is a healthy way of dealing with the circumstances. So our advice is always to plan, don't panic. By putting some safety margins in place, that will keep you from panicking as well. When you save up money toward an emergency that could happen and you've already got that money in the bank, if that emergency shows itself, you're not going to panic. You're going to say, well, we've, we've covered car repair issues, for instance. We can now take the car in and get it repaired because we have X amount of money already saved toward that. So mm -hmm. planning keeps you from panicking most of the time. When it comes to dealing with the unexpected, there truly are some things that happen that you could never have expected to yeah. happen. For instance, right now in the United States, we're dealing with a couple of unexpected yes. things. We're dealing with the dock worker strike. And we're also dealing with the effects of the hurricane that took out pretty much the center part of the entire country. Mm -hmm. Nobody could have foreseen those mm -hmm. things happening, which is why it's really important to think in terms of your overall goals, making sure that you have a fully funded emergency yes. fund and make making sure that you have a fully stocked pantry. Yes. Those are a couple of things we've talked about repeatedly on this channel that are really important to do. And make sure that you have a list of where all of your emergency supplies are in your house yeah. and you have planned for using those emergency supplies if you need them. This next strategy may seem a little bit counterintuitive, mm -hmm. and that is never rely on one strategy for reaching a financial goal. 
We call this creating a plan A, B, C, and D. <laughs> yes. It's like backup plans to your original plan. Yeah. Because as we just described, stuff happens. Mm -hmm. You may encounter unexpected injuries, which we have encountered. Oh, yeah. You may encounter job layoffs, which we have also yeah. been through. Yeah. But when you have things in place and strategies already thought out, that makes that so much easier. Mm -hmm. When Larry got laid off, we had a fully funded six-month emergency fund. That gave us the privilege of being able to think through carefully what we wanted to do next and with, figure out what next his next was. job yeah. might look like like. Mm -hmm. So preparing for contingencies is important. Another example, when our son went through college, his goal was to go through debt free. So he yeah. had a plan A, a plan B, <laughs> a plan yeah. C, yeah. and a plan D. He had them all written out. We like to refer to this as our what if strategy. Yeah. And we employ this in a lot of different areas of our life. Right now, we're employing it when it comes to rising prices. Yeah. For instance, in 2022, when gas prices were going up astronomically, and by the way, I just heard a report that gas prices, because of what is happening right now in the United States that we've just talked about, with the, strike. With the dock worker strike, yeah. and also with all of the destruction yeah. that, that went through because of the hurricane, yeah. gas prices are expected to go up. Yeah. So we will probably go back and revisit this specific what if plan, but we had it all written out in 2022. What do you do if gas prices go up to $7 a gallon, to $10 a gallon, to $12 a gallon, to $15 a gallon? You figure out a game plan. What are your options? What are your choices? When you look at those things ahead of something unexpected happening, it makes it so much easier it to does. navigate when it that does. thing does happen. Now, there's no guarantee that it will happen, but if no. it does, you have a game plan in place. Now, this what if strategy is just a part of our rising prices workbook. And that rising prices workbook is part of our frugal financial planner super pack. Twice a year and only twice a year, we offer our frugal finance planner bundle and we add four really high value extra bonuses that you're only going to get during that specific time period. Now it's going to be available again in January because we wanna get you started on the right foot with your finances in 2025. But what we're doing a little differently this time is mm -hmm. we are having a wait list. Now the folks on the wait list are going to get some unexpected bonuses and some free value also included in the wait list. Believe me, it's gonna be fun guys. It's gonna be like a party. It's where all the cool kids are hanging out. If you wanna get on the wait list, I've already opened up the wait list. I'll leave a link for you to sign up for that wait list. It'll be in the description of the video. If you're finding this video helpful, we'd love you to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we want to have you a part of our frugal family. Hit subscribe. This next one is counterintuitive as well. Never save every single penny. If you do that, you're going to wear yourself out. It'll just get old. It's good to save a certain amount and then have a certain amount that you have left over in your budget to enjoy yourself, to have some fun, to have, have some activities that you can do as a family together. We're all about carefully deciding how you're going to spend that money that you have set aside for fun, for yeah. eating out, for yes. recreation, for things like concerts, family occasions. Yeah. We think that you should carefully decide how you dole out that money, yes. but we are not that channel that's going to tell you, no, don't have that money. You <laughs> right. absolutely should. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of raising four kids on a low income, we always had a certain amount of yeah. money set aside that we knew we were going to choose to do some things that would cost us some money. And we joyfully did that. Why? Yeah. Because the money was already set aside in the budget. Yeah. So take our advice. Don't save every single penny. Never do anything that's against your conscience or against your value system. You'll see people saving money all kinds of ways. 
I think it's okay to admit that in the area of saving money, in the area of frugality, that's a pretty big umbrella. There's a lot of people saving money in a whole lot of different ways. It is okay with us and it's okay for you to look at some of the ways that money is being saved and say either that's just not for me or it's like, oh, I don't know. I just feel like like I can't do that. That's something that I'm not willing to do. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Uh, you all know that we've talked a lot on this channel about the fact that we are Christians and we tithe 10% of our income. Yeah. When we were going for big savings goals, when we were raising kids, when we were doing those things, we never ever compromised our value on that tithe right. every single month. We made sure that we were able to pay that and we paid it first right. before we paid anything else. Mm -hmm. That was a part of of our value system. For sure. When you have something that you do that is a part of your values, don't compromise it. Don't feel like anybody else should tell you that you should compromise it and make sure that you are spending and saving and setting goals in accordance with that. If you come across a plan that seems just a little bit shady or <laughs> or really you're really not comfortable yeah, yeah. with it, this is something else that would kind of fall into that category. It's better off not to go with it. It doesn't even have to be shady. It might just be really risky. It might be something oh. where you're really depending on the stock market to keep supplying money that's coming in to your funds to take out a loan against that. That's a bad idea. And that's been proven over and over in the past. So make sure that you're operating according to your conscience and your value system. So let's talk a little bit more about some of those shady investments, things that we <laughs> think you should not do, and that is rely on OPM. That stands yes. for Other, Other People's, People's Money. Money. We had <laughs> friends in the mid 90s that mm. took out a loan against the value of their home. Yeah. They took out a HELOC and invested that money in the stock market. Now, granted, back then, the stock market was on fire. It was doing good. It was, <laughs> it was doing, doing good. great. Yeah, yeah. And we invested in the stock market back in the mid-90s. Sure, sure. But we never put our home no. or the rest of our savings at risk. No, we knew no. exactly what we were doing, and we had a certified financial planner that was helping us figure out those yes. steps. I will say that. That's right. That's right. Look, if you see somebody doing something and it involves other people's money, and I know that this is a popular idea. I've seen people on TikTok. I've seen people on <laughs> Instagram. I've seen people on Facebook Reels that are like, it's okay, invest other people's money to get to where you wanna go. Don't do it. It is incredibly risky in our opinion. Never compare yourself to others. Mm -hmm. That can lead to your own personal disappointment in what you're doing. When you're comparing yourself to somebody else, what you might be doing is comparing yourself to somebody that has big hat, no cattle. Mm -hmm. So they are appearing like they are incredibly wealthy, like they've got it all together, and you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They may not. Never compare yourself to how other people are doing. Compare yourself with yourself. Go back in your own history of your finances. See what you did last year and how much you're improving this year. You might be really encouraged. Never rely solely on wallpaper. That says willpower. <laughs> oh, I thought I said wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Never rely solely on wallpaper or you, willpower. You definitely don't want to do it with the wallpaper. Look, ask any woman who's tried to lose weight over the age of 50. Willpower just is not going to cut it. No, it's not. And it's the exact same thing with saving money. Yeah. You can't will yourself into making that <laughs> bank account grow. Mm -hmm. You know why? because you're missing some really important key factors that will help you to be able to do that. One of those is to have a system in place. Yes. Make sure that you have those yes. goals written down. Make sure you're putting them where you can see them. Make sure that you are tracking your progress on those goals every single month. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you are automating every single thing that you can. Yep. We discovered a few months ago that we really needed to have a specific bank account set aside yeah. for funding 
medical emergencies oh, yeah, yeah. or medical, medical expenses. expenses that were yeah. not covered by our insurance. Yeah. So at the first of every month, we have it automated. So $300 yeah. goes from our savings to that particular different savings account. You know why that's important? We can at any time go online and we can look and see how yeah. much money is in that account. We mm -hmm. can see it grow. We can make sure that it's growing at the rate that we need it to be able to grow. That helps us to be able to make changes in our budget if we need to and it's not growing quickly enough. All of these things are systems yeah. that you can have in place that will help you rely on systems rather than willpower. Now, willpower can get you started. Absolutely. Will, willpower is a good motivational force. It's just not that you want to rely on that for everything. What you want to do is plan. Planning is what will keep you going. Because if you don't plan, that willpower is going to sizzle hot get you going, and then it's going to die off. And sort of bouncing off that whole idea that we just explained, you should never save money without a plan for what you're going to do with right, that money. Right. We call this yes, the big, yes. big green pile of cash error, and we made it early we, in our we've marriage. We've done it. We've done it. We saved a big pile of green cash and went, oh, look, that doesn't have anything we're going to do with we it. We could buy a real expensive van, we and should. that's what we did. <laughs> and we should not have, let me tell <laughs> Way you Way too much money. Way too much on oh that Oh, my van. gosh. It wasn't even the right van. <laughs> I wish, <laughs> wish we hadn't have bought it at all. Yeah, it was one of those moments where we saw the cash in our account. Yeah. Every penny, and I know, like Dave Ramsey, we're Dave Ramsey fans. Yeah, we like it. Yeah. Because he's right. Yeah. Every dollar should have a job to do, sure. guys. It's and that sure. is one of the really important things that we learned from Dave Ramsey along yeah. the way, is that after we made the big green pile of cash mistake, <laughs> I went, well, maybe some financial planner has something to say about this. I went, oh, Dave Ramsey says that every dollar should have a job to do. And I went, mm -hmm. I, based on our experience, I was like, I think he's right. So now every dollar that you have, you know you can't spend it. It has something that is slated for. Randomly slashing your budget can make you feel deprived. What you want to do is systematically look for places that you can reduce it in, and that will keep that from happening. Now, if you're ready to reduce those expenses, and what you really want is a quick start guide. Yeah. You want some frugal habits, some weekly habits, some money-saving habits. They're going to lead <laughs> you toward those goals, but they're going to do it in a hurry. Yeah. We did a video, and we gave you our top 10 ways to do that. It's right over there.